Hello and welcome to the interview. Five years ago, Egypt celebrated a new dawn. On February the 11th, 2011, President Hosni Mubarak resigned. He'd been in power for nearly 30 years, but it took just 18 days of mass protests to evict him. Such a display of people power is unthinkable in today's Egypt. In the run-up to the anniversary of the revolution, President al-Sisi's security forces arrested activists and reinforced the iconic Tahrir Square. But they couldn't prevent a hashtag from trending in the Arab Twitter sphere: the people demand the fall of the regime. So what is it like to be a critic of Sisi's government? Today I'm joined by two Egyptians who've been at the coalface. Abderrahman Mansour is a political activist and researcher. Welcome to the program. And I'm joined also by Bahel Din Hassan, who directs the Cairo Institute for Human Rights Studies. Welcome to you. So gentlemen, both of you now live outside Egypt. Just tell us briefly the circumstances of you having to leave the country, perhaps starting with you, Abdirahman. So, yeah, so after June 30, the, the violence by the, the, the state started to be uh, like really scary. Uh, Sisi regime had killed like 1,000 in Rabaa massacres in one day. And it was for me uh, a sign that uh, the situation is not safe for, for everyone. And during this time, many of the activists uh, and citizens have, live, have lived Egypt uh, outside. And I think being in Egypt now is uh, very scary, very risky, and without uh, like real price. How did you leave? Uh, simply because I uh, received the uh, death threat. Death so, threats. Yeah, when I consulted uh, my colleagues, not only in the Cairo Institute, but in the human rights community, some uh, academicians, even some diplomats, some senior officials in the United Nations, they uh, confirmed uh, not the report about the threat, but the credibility of the threat, uh, bearing in mind the whole context of what is going on in Egypt now. In fact, this is not the first case. Mm. So you mean that the people you were in touch with confirmed that there was a credible threat against yes. your life? Yes, yes. And, and what, I mean, there's now a big diaspora of activists from Egypt already around the world. What, uh, what is the, I mean, what sort of numbers are we talking here? I think we are talking about thousands of, uh, mainly from Brotherhood, uh, because there is, they, are, they banned Brotherhood in working from work in Egypt and thousands of them left to, to Turkey, to other Arab countries, and some of them went to Europe and America. And also from the secular part, from the young activists, also hundreds have left Egypt uh, outside. Um, yeah, there is. The, we are in the. We're still in the beginning, in the in the second or third, third years after uh, Sisi coup, and the numbers are growing up every day. You mentioned the Muslim Brotherhood. Just a question to you, Bahel Din. Uh, are you in touch? Is your institute in touch much with uh, Muslim Brotherhood people who are still? Uh, who are still left inside Egypt. Is there any contact between the Muslim Brotherhood and more, let's say, secular organizations or not really? It is too risky to, uh, to, to, to approach or to have a regular relationship with the Brotherhood in mm -hmm. Egypt. In fact, also collaboration between secularists it has become also risky. Yeah. Uh, on that point, on on communication between secular activists. Of course, you used to run a blog. Uh, in fact, you still blog some sometimes. Yeah. Uh, and I just want to show our viewers uh, a Facebook page, actually, which uh, was very important in the run-up to the uh, Egyptian revolution, uh, which you, Abderrahman Mansour, was an administrator of. And this uh, is a page called We Are All Khaled Said. And this is a page which triggered calls for that uh, 2011 revolution in Egypt. Um, is the internet still playing a major role in uh, trying to galvanize uh, dissent in Egypt today? Yeah, of course, of course, because the Sisi regime has uh, uh, ended up in a public space uh, so people can enter or went to the street to express their anger or their demand. So people, they, they doesn't have any chance only in the uh, atmosphere of the internet and social uh, media platform. 
including Facebook and Twitter. Uh, and I, I think people now uh, recognize that they can talk uh, freely and publicly in, in Facebook about uh, criticizing the regime and the, the military, the police. And there are also many initiatives uh, in, in the internet uh, to support any demand of, of doctors, of lawyers, of uh, many campaigns uh, to free the people in, in, in the jail. Uh, like, and many people, when they, they went to the street to express the, the, their anger, one of them, uh, Mohammed Mahmoud, a children who is 17 years old, he went to the street with his shirt and he wrote on his shirt, no torture. And he now in the jail for uh, like two years. So it is so risky for the, anyone in Egypt to go to the street to express his or her feeling and the internet in the only way. Yeah, it is amazing in this regard. Five years ago, Egyptians were saying, كلنا خالد سعيد. All of us are Khalid Said. Five years later, some Egyptians who went to the Italian embassy in solidarity with the uh, researcher, uh, PhD student, Giulio uh, Regini, some of them were, uh, came with a poster saying, Giulio Regini was one of us. So it is logic that he is killed like us. This is a case, of course, which has uh, triggered protests in Rome, for example. Do you think that the, the, the murder of that Italian student in Egypt uh, could actually change uh, the approach of uh, Western governments in regards to the situation in Egypt? I think it will have uh, it will bring many attention. It will not be like big case because you know in 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 Sinai like 80, 80 uh, Rus Russian citizen have killed in the flight. Uh, and there is no pressure on Egyptian uh, regime uh, to review their uh, their security issues in the airports. Uh, it will bring attention to to show that any uh, citizen from any other countries equal any uh, Egyptian citizen who now more than forty one thousand in the jail. And also it bring the 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 the, the how scary the the police in in Egypt to uh, arrest people and hide them. We have now like four hundred thirty case of enforced uh, the the disappeared citizen in Egypt. It is not only the worst case uh, about the uh, Giuliani. There are many cases uh, got killed. We have ninety Egyptian uh, citizen got killed in the police station in the last year. Yes, in other words, when you have a, a foreign national that focuses attention and it reminds people that this is happening every day to Egyptians who you don't hear about in the Western media, who you don't have a face to their... Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. But the, uh, our, our, uh, our history in the last three years after the coup is so uh, disappointed, uh, including France. We have now Holland and he is in, a, in, a, he, in the, first, the first country have welcomed Sisi outside of Egypt was, was France and, and, and bringing him and give, giving him uh, aircraft to support uh, his war on tourists. And he's, he is, he's also failed in this, in this war. So our, our relation, our uh, imagination about how uh, the Western countries can support or can uh, attack the regime is, uh, is zero. Unfortunately, the European government have, uh, haven't yet concluded the right lesson from the refugees crisis, from the uh, pairs of uh, ISIS and the, its expansion in several Arab countries. Still, the short-sighted policies towards the Arab region is dominating among the uh, European government. And they uh, more and more, the focus on a very short-term uh, policies, strategies, and accordingly, short-term stability at the expense of a sustainable stability, not only in Egypt, but also in the Arab region. And we're just seeing pictures there of uh, the opening of the Suez Canal, which of course was this grand gesture where uh, foreign leaders came to uh, mm -hmm. Uh, to uh, essentially approve uh, President al-Sisi. Um, but just to, to I, I hear what you're saying, uh, Bahildin, but I want to put it to you that it's also at least partly a failure of Egyptian civil society uh, not to have uh, changed the Western approach to this situation, isn't it? No, isn't it? Uh, 
Um, it is, um, uh, there are a lot of uh, ongoing business in this, uh, in this regard. I mean, there, there are uh, major deals of um, arms, with, um, uh, not only with Egypt, but also with Saudi Arabia, with other Arab countries. And unfortunately, the such business, it comes at the expense even of the European values. Well, uh, Rahman Mansour, as um, your colleague is saying, there's this... Uh, um, this, if there is this short-sightedness, short-termism in Western policy, what do you think uh, Egyptian activists can do going forward? So yeah, so they they still in the in the work in activism. Uh, and months ago, the uh, all the university in Egypt, uh, the revolutionary movement has won uh, all the the chairs in the union, uh, and they still uh, campaigning for the uh, prisons in the in the in the, in the jail. Uh, they still uh, criticize it's easy in the internet and the newspaper and in, in, in TV when they have the chance, and they are trying to build an organization and network uh, to replace the system, the the regime, when we have the chance in the in the in the future. Okay, we'll have to end it there. Thank you very much to both of you, gentlemen. You. Abdurrahman Mansour, a political activist and researcher, and Bahe Din Hassan, director of the Cairo Institute for Human Rights Studies. That's all we have time for on the interview. More news coming up soon on France 24.